rain represents the outpouring of the Spirit. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Good to see you today. House of God this morning to worship Him. Yeah. We are a blessed people. Praise God. Let me, let me go ahead and make this announcement while, while uh, uh, it's on my mind. <laughs> uh, some, of, some, some have come to me and asked me to do another study on the book of Revelation. Uh, Amen. And, uh, I know if you hear two or three years ago, we, we done one. So starting this coming Wednesday night, we're going, we're going to start back in the book of Revelations uh, from the first chapter all the way through. And uh, uh, we'll, we'll go till we get through. Well, I mean, not all Wednesday night. I'm talking about it. We'll go on Wednesday night. Too. <laughs> and somebody said, oh. <laughs> but each consecutive Wednesday night until we get through. So, so uh, be, be studying and praying about that, and, and that God would just give us and wisdom and all of us understanding uh, of the Word of God in the book of Revelation. So, go with me now to Acts, the 8th chapter, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chair, reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humili humiliation his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, Thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the church to stand still. And they went both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. Praise God. Praise God. Let's praise him one more time. God, we love you. God, we praise you. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. God, we ask God that you just anoint and use us for thy glory. And our hearts and ears to receive your word. And we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. Praise God that you may be seated. And we see how that Philip had just left a, a revival in the city of Samaria. And as he was leaving, the Spirit of the Lord prompted him to go into the desert, go toward the south, the way that goes down from Jerusalem to the gate of which is desert. And when he did, he came across the Ethiopian eunuch uh, in the chariot, and he was reading from the book of Isaiah and, uh, of the prophecy concerning Jesus Christ. The Bible said Philip attached himself to the chariot and asked him, did he understand what he, what he was reading? He said, well, I can't unless somebody explains it to me, unless somebody tells me. And the Bible said that Philip began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus, and as they went on their way, and you had to know that, that Philip went on to, to, to preach to him about, the, <laughs> about baptism uh, because he said as they came to water, he said, well, here's water. What does it mean to be baptized? And uh, Philip told him, said, well, if you believe, you know, with all your heart, you can be baptized. And he said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So they stopped the chair and Philip baptized him. But, but what, what I'm talking about is that 
the eunuch wasted no time when he heard the scripture All right. about obeying the scripture. All right. So so I just simply titled this message, Why Not Now? Why not? Mm -hmm. All right. Why not now? What Amen. Well, why, why are we putting it off? What are we waiting on? Why not now? If there, if there are things in the Word of God that we need, know we need to move up to and do, well, why not now? Right. Why not? The enemy didn't want to waste no time. He was excited about it. He didn't want, want to waste any time about uh, what, what the Lord had uh, prompted his heart about, what Philip had told him about. He said, well, here's water. What does hinder me? From being baptized, right. you know, in every one of our lives, there are there are, there are things that uh, uh, we want to do and desire to do and plan on doing, but so many times we put them off. So when it comes to the uh, time that, that we we just have to stop and stand. So well, why not? If I'm going to do it, why not now? All right, come on. Why don't we do it now? There, there, there's, a, there's a story also in the book of Acts. Acts the 24th chapter. Verse 24. And after certain days when Philip, Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered and said, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. Huh? When, I, when I've got a convenient season, I, I, I'm, I'm going to call for you, Paul, and just hear this matter again. See, too many of us are looking for a convenient season. Come on now. And I'm going to tell you, if you keep waiting, you'll never find it. And you're going to keep waiting until your time runs out. So why not now? What's wrong with now? Now faith is such a thing so for, And the evidence of things not seen. Now faith. So why not, why not now? Too many people looking for a convenient season. Too many people are looking for a convenient way out. Amen. You'll never find that convenient season. There's no record of where Felix ever found it. Never found that convenient until, he, until your time runs out. So we, we've, got to, we've got to make up our mind concerning the gospel. We've got to make up our mind concerning Jesus. I think a lot of times, though, we wait as, as the man that uh, laid by the pool of Bethesda. If you go back and you read that story, you find that the Bible said there, there was a great multitude of evident folk laying around that pool. The Bible said at certain times, the angel would come down and he would, he would stir up the pool, you know, and, and the first one in the pool you know, he he trouble the water, and the first one in the pool would receive their healing. <clears throat> Sometimes, and I, I I know I know the Bible teaches us that that, that you know we can't come to to Christ unless the Spirit draws us. But sometimes we sit around and wait for that certain thing. You know, if this was to happen, I'd, I'd believe it. If this was to happen, I'd I'd go. Well, you, you've got a whole multitude of folk around the pool waiting for the troubling of the water and the only one of them ever gets in. Yeah. Jesus came along and He looked at the man that was lame lying there and the Bible said that He knew that He had been in that condition or that state a long time. Some of you come with the same old battles. Come on. You come with the same old problems. Uh, and say one day I'm going, I'm going to get this right. Well, one day I'm going to do something about this. One of these days I, I, I'm going to repent. One of these days I'm going to get baptized. One of these days I'm going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, one of these days I'm going to do it. But I keep coming and bringing my problem, hoping that uh, may, may, maybe if somebody don't get in there before me, you know, and we wait till somebody does, 
to give us an excuse why we won't. So, Jesus, Jesus looked at the man. The Bible said that he knew that he'd been in that condition a long time. And he looked at it. He just simply asked him, will you be made whole? In other words, he was wanting to know, do you really want this? Do well, he began to make excuses. You know, every time I, I, I come, you know, somebody always stepping down before me. Come on. But there was a great multitude there. See, too, too many people lying around waiting for the trouble in the water. Uh oh. And Jesus is saying, well, why not now? Do you want to be made whole? All right. Do you want to be made whole? If you do, rise up, take up your bed, and walk. Huh? In other words, what, what you told the land? Do something about it. Do something about it. Too many times we come, God moves, God touches our heart, God convicts our heart, and we go home the same way we can. Back into the same rut, back into the same sin. But I, but next week when I go, I'm gonna I'm gonna get it right. But if you got some things to get right today, why not now? Come on, come on. Why not now? Right. Because we don't ever know when that trumpet's going to sound. Amen. Huh? It could be before this service is over with. Right. Amen. Right. Even on top of that, God could call you home any minute now. Right. You don't ever know when, when that heartbeat you've got is going to be the last heartbeat. Right. Or that breath you're taking is going to be the last oh, breath. Oh, Yet we're saying, I'll put it off till tomorrow. I'll put it, I'm going to get it right one day. I'm going to do it one day, but why not now? Oh, I'll call for you at a convenience season. Oh. Yeah. Look at look at Acts twenty six. Acts twenty six, verse twenty four. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself, much learning doth make thee mad. Huh? Much, much, much learning doth make you mad. In other words, say, Paul, you're talking crazy. You're talking crazy, Paul. See, that's what a lot of people think about preaching. <laughs> <laughs> he said but he said I'm not mad most noble Festus but speak forth the words of truth and soberness for the king knoweth of these things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in the corner. If you have this book, you have all things pertaining unto God. Amen. Huh? It's in there for you to read. It's in there for you to find. It's in there for you to believe. It wasn't done in a corner. Right. Mm. Look what look what he told in verse 27. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? And before he had a chance to answer, Paul answered for him. He said, I know you believe. I know you believe. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost. Almost that persuades me to be a Christian. I always heard the saying, the old saying that goes, uh, you know, close or almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> right. <laughs> Paul, Paul answered him back and he said,
And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all them that hear me this day will both all most and all together, such as I am, except these bonds. Paul was, Paul was bound. He was in prison at the time. He was bound. They would call for him and he, to, to come speak for himself. He'd speak for himself. And, then, and he's now telling them, he said, I wish you were, were all together as I am. In other words, as fully persuaded as I am about this gospel. See, sometimes we almost make that move. We almost make up our mind. We, are, we, we, I, we get hold of it in our mind. We're thinking, oh, boy, I almost went to the altar. Come on, Dad. Come on. <laughs> almost is not good enough. Right. Huh? Yeah, all, almost is looking for a convenient season. Mm. The Bible tells us in Joel, the third chapter, verses 13 and 14. It said, put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Church, I'm going to tell you something. We're nearing the, the ripening of the harvest. Put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full, and the vats overflow, for their wickedness is great. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting here, standing here wondering how, how much greater could wickedness get than it is now? How much greater could it get than it is now? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Church is near. We better be making up our minds what we're going to do. Right. So if it's ever crossed your mind that I need to do this, if it's ever crossed your mind that I'm going to make things right, if it's ever crossed your mind and I'm going to give my heart to God, All right. then why not now? Amen. Come on. The eunuch didn't waste no time. Right. He said, Philip, here's water. What's hindering me from being baptized? Philip said, well, if you believe, come on. In Luke 14, chapter. Luke 14. Fourteen verse sixteen. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they with all with one consent began to make excuse. Hey, hey, if you make an excuse today, you can say, I'm just like the people in the Bible. But I wouldn't be so proud of it. And they with all, with one consent, began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee have me excused. I mean, no, we can all find excuses. Amen. Every one of us. Amen. We do. We, we all can and we all do. And another said, I, 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 bought, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray thee have me excused. And another said, I married a wife. Therefore, I cannot come. <laughs> she won't let him go anywhere. <laughs> it 
So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the street, the lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highway, and hedge, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Praise God. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. In other words, those he first invited. Their excuses ran out. Their excuses ran out. And none of these men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. So why, why, why not now? What, what, what are we waiting on? What's, what's the problem? What's the excuse? How long are we going to tarry? How long are you going to wait? Because time is swiftly running now. It's swiftly running now. So why not make things right now? Why not seek? He, he said in one place, seek me while I may be found. Amen. Call on me while I'm near. Simply in closing, 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. He said, For I for he said, I have heard thee in a time except thee. And in the day of salvation have I secured thee. And that means help or relieved or aided. Behold. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. So why not now? Why not now? We, 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 we're almost to the stage that if we put off living for God and we put off serving for God and we put off making things right in our lives with God, it's almost like playing a game of Russian roulette. You spin in the cylinder hoping it don't land on the live round. Right. We, we do that. We do it by our actions. Right. That's right. Every day without God, you're taking a chance that that trumpet don't sound then. That's right. That the rapture don't take That's place right. then. For why not now? I'm going to one day, well, why not now? There was a man that I knew years ago. That the Lord had called him to preach. I mean, he was in the church. He was in the church. Sunday school teaching. Him, him and, a, and another a man talked talk to youth class. I said under him. In a youth class. And the Lord called him to preach. And he put it off. He said, well... When I make enough money, get what I get, get comfortable in that, get what I get, get all this done, and all, all, all the money I need to make, where I can I can lay aside, lay it down, then I'm gonna go ahead and preach. He never made it. He might have made part of his fortune, but he never he never made it to preach because at a young age he died of a heart attack. See if he said. He simply took the now. Right. See, now is our way out. Right. Thank you, Lord. Obeying the now and doing it now is our way out. God may be merciful and He may be gracious to give us tomorrow. He may, he may be merciful and gracious to give us several weeks and several months and several years. We don't know. But why take the chance? Amen. We're going to make things right. Why not now? Right. Let's all stand.